Good afternoon, everybody. We're just working a half day today. I had to go get some oats this morning, and a few other odds and ends. So I decided to bring up Buck and Ken today. I've had several people ask me why I don't log with them and just use the other two more. And the reason being mostly is because Buck is an older horse and so I don't want to push him too hard, although he's very capable of doing quite a bit of doing a lot of work. Um, and I do log with him still a fair amount. But I also do sleigh rides with these two when we have snow. Here it is the middle of December and still no snow. So um, I just wanted to work them today to keep them in shape. They're in fairly decent shape. But, um, so we'll log today and uh, um, see how they go. Uh, a lot of people wonder which one is the stronger pair. And uh, maybe you'll get an idea by watching me. I'm not going to say one way or another. So let's get at it. So the question of the day is, how old can draft horses be able to continue working? And uh, that's kind of a, it depends kind of a question. I feel that when a horse has been working all of his life, he is able to continue stay working because it's in shape and stayed in shape and, and those muscles are still working good and he's able to go. but. Horses are just like people. Myself, I'm thinking of especially. You know, the only reason I'm still working today in the woods at my age, and you know, I'm not that old, but I could have been hurt many times and I would have been all done. And it's the same with horses, you know. Anything can happen to a horse and then they're done for their useful work in life. But uh, as of right now, Buck is. 20 years old and he is still going strong. So I would say some horses can work, even big ones, can work well into their early 20s if things are just about perfect. These three pieces are top logs off of three trees I dropped right in the same area and I pulled the tree out and then cut the top half of them off because they were too long to make it around the corners in my road. This particular job is such that the owner wants a lot of the pine out of here so that the hardwood will grow and so much of this pine is over mature pine so it's it is best to get it cut and get it out of here. So it does look like it's getting kind of thin back there in places it is, but there's still a lot of young regrowth in here and the hardwood will come back in, which is what he wants. So I just pulled these two pieces up to the third piece and then I will put my tongs on the third piece because I can't get a chain on it very easy, so I'll just use the tongs and pull all three out at once.
I guess they need to spend a little bit more time in the woods. They're not standing as well as they normally would if they were worked every day in the woods. Okay, I have this tree to go down. I'm a little bit concerned because if you look, it looks like a perfect path for the tree, no problems at all. But when you go up, there is a soft maple to one side and a cherry looks like on the other side, up in the tops. And If I have it lined up perfect, it should hit right between those two tops. But if it doesn't, it's going to unfortunately snap part of that cherry off, or even worse yet, be pulled down into that soft maple, which is a prong tree. But I don't think it's going to be that. I think it's going to be lined up all right. The wedge looks okay by me. It looks like it's lined up right, so we'll. We've got it almost all cut off here with the wedge in. I just gotta cut my little bit in the center and hope for the best. Went just as I was hoping for. There's very little damage to those tops, and she's on the ground. A tree this size with a big skitter, it's not a big deal if you hang them up. I've pulled down many trees this size, but it is a big deal with horses. If they get hung up in the wrong way, you can really have all they can handle to get them down. And not only that, there's a very big danger factor in it all. So I'm so thankful that it went down just as planned.
way my trail is set up, I have a pretty good corner to go around right to start with, so I'm going to have to cut it off. So I'm cutting a 16 foot log off, and that'll be all I take out for a hitch, and then I'll come back and get the rest of the tree afterwards. I'm just putting the chain on the rest of the tree before I cut it so if it drops down tight to the ground the chain will already be on it. This is my brand new 372 I bought. I had it in an earlier video and I really like it and I'm very glad also because my older 372 for some reason this morning which would not start. It's in the truck, so I'm using my other saw on the landing. This is my small saw, my 562. I'm glad that one started up at least. My lane is getting pretty filled up. My truck is supposed to come in tomorrow. We'll probably take three, maybe four loads out of here. We have this first pile here is pretty nice stuff. This second pile here is smaller top logs. 
but there's a few nice ones in there also. But this pile here is mostly big, ugly butt logs that the Amish and any other sawmill does not want. I do make a lot of tabletops, so I will take them home and try to make something out of them. Um, Adirondack siding also, we make quite a lot of that and we can use some of that stuff for that. But there's a lot of red rot in there and you can see that one big 16 footer is actually got some big holes in it. And this is actually 17, this is another 17 footer right here. I will cut them in half when I get home, but for the trucker I figured it'd be better to have some of those long ones to, to top off the load. Here's another pile of pretty nice logs here. And even stuff we brought out this afternoon were pretty fair. So that's what we have. I scale them and mark them all here so that whether they go to my mill or to the Amish, they're already marked. And so we just tally them up and we'll know what we have for footage. Oh, anyways, I'll unhitch this one. This is another cradle hitch. Uh, I should have got this, could have got this a little closer, but they just pulled it so easy, it really didn't matter. But uh, I did have a person ask me, stop by actually here, and he wasn't quite so sure how, how the cradle hitch works. So just a little closer, another close look up at it. As you can see, the hook is down low. And so that chain from this side hitches up there. And then on the other side, you can see the other chain with the other hook is down low. And that hitches up there. And what that does is it tends to lift the log a little bit more than if it was just one chain on top because the hook would stay on top like that. So here I'm coming out with my last hitch of the day. It was another pretty cold afternoon, so I didn't bother starting the skid steer up until I bought that last load out and I got that running and I just let it idle while I went in and got this last hitch. We had a pretty good afternoon for a short for a short afternoon. I think we got a little over 1700 feet out. So I would say for Buck especially being his age, over 20, uh, he seems to take it quite well and does very good for an old duffer. So now I'll just have to pile up my logs and unhitch the horses and we can go home. I hope you enjoyed the video and I just want to thank all of my subscribers. I can't believe it, we actually hit 10,000 subscribers and uh, I never thought that many people would be interested in watching this type of stuff, but I'm really glad that you are, so I hope you continue.